Happy spring, y'all. Um, all right, so since it's the first day of spring, I kind of have to go into what I'm all about. Uh, I'm a plant lady in Cassie's phone. I'm labeled as Professor Sprout. That's just a thing she does. Everybody's a character. Um, so my whole thing is um, plants, which I'm pretty good at. I've been in the industry for six years now. I've been working at an organic garden center. Um, and today's actually our opening day, but I don't work Mondays, so I didn't have to go to work. Um, instead, I spent my day, actually the past like four hours, just cleaning this room um, because it smelled a little funny and I needed to take care of that. Um, yeah, so since it's the first day of spring and I'm the plant lady, it's only natural that I talk about plant things. Anyway, um, so what I'm focusing on today is houseplants because that's all we got going on right now. There's a lot of good points to having houseplants. The biggest issue is finding ones that work with you because there's so many different types and some are more finicky than others. Um, and it also depends on your lifestyle. Like if you're out all the time, if you're working a lot, um, there's different plants for you. Like if you're not there to water, a succulent's probably a good idea. Um, just cause you let it go and hardly ever have to water it. It actually, they like a little bit of abuse. If they don't get watered for like a bit, and they start freaking out, they actually get a really intense color. Um, like I got a couple. Like um, this one here uh, is a succulent planter that actually was on top of um, a pumpkin that we do for the holidays. It was really cool. But like there's this jade that's getting like all nice and like purpley. And some of these other guys, like this one's starting to get red and like this one's starting to get like a little bit of orange on the outside. The reason why they're doing this is because I forgot to water them for like two weeks and they thought they were gonna die. So they're stressing out and this is the result. My sisters, cause she has one like this, but it's huge. Um, this little jade plant here, it's so brilliantly purple cause that bitch never waters it, but it looks amazing and it's still alive, so good for her. Um, yeah, so if you don't water a lot, uh, succulents are a good one. Um, this is another, ooh, stuff. another variety of succulent, um, Calendiva. Uh, this I actually got uh, about a month ago and the buds were still pretty tight and it is still blooming. And I don't know if you can see, uh, but there's another little bud right here that's not fully open. And as it continues to open, it's getting this really nice like pink color. And this is what's classified as a succulent as well. So um, you don't have to water it as often. Um, with succulents, the easiest way to tell if they need water is never rely on the soil. You always want the soil to go dry. Just let it go dry. So to check to water, um, I take the leaves and I kind of like molest them a little bit. Um, and if they're nice and firm, they don't need any water. They are good to go, leave it alone. If they start feeling kind of like mushy or like bend really easily, then you definitely want to uh, water them. Maybe like soak the pot a little bit. Um, another pretty easy one are like ferns. Like I just got this guy. Um, this is a foxtail fern. Ferns, pretty easy. Um, you want to let them go dry at like the first like top inch. You don't want them to go fully, fully dry. So I have a good amount of house plants and they're not always um, happy. That has a lot to do with the winter time. Uh, there's less light since the days are shorter, so they aren't able to produce as much chlorophyll or photosynthesize. Um, so a lot of them go into kind of a dormancy period where they don't need much of anything. You don't even want to water them too much. Um, they're not trying to grow because they don't have the energy to sustain growth. So um, you don't want to fertilize them during this time. You just kind of like give them water and let them coast along. Uh, so from about November, like late September, November till about now or even maybe mid-February, no, about now. Um, just give them enough water to kind of keep them alive. You don't want to overwater them because since they're in dormancy, they're not taking up as much water. Um, so just like a little splash every now and then. So what I've been doing is 
since I work at an organic garden center, I have access to lots of these really amazing products. A couple of things that I do is I have this uh, stuff, stuff uh, called Super Thrive um, that you only need a little bit of. So I've actually had this little bottle for over a year because you need like a quarter teaspoon per gallon of water. Um, it's a bunch of uh, vitamins and kelp. I have brought so many plants back from the dead with this stuff. It's amazing. Um, so Super Thrive is one of them, uh, which I add a little bit into the water and since it has kelp in it, I'm batshit about kelp, that could be a whole other video. A um, couple other things is um, there's this powder here um, that's water soluble, um, organic plant magic which is really awesome. I love the shit out of this company. I actually know um, the guy who uh, formulated it and his father who were like, they're amazing. Um, I've been using this product since I started working at NatureWorks like six years ago now. Uh, what it is, it's a dehydrated compost tea um, with a lot of uh, beneficial microorganisms in it. Um, and if you don't know what beneficial microorganisms are, they are like the bacteria, protozoa, and mycorrhiza um, that are living within the soil of your plants and the soil outside. They create this uh, soil food web where they make sure that they work together so that your plants can actually take up all these nutrients. So like um, bacteria goes through and munches away at like iron or calcium or all of these minerals. They actually munch away at it and they, they eat it. And then the protozoa come by and they uh, munch, munch, munch on the bacteria. And then inside the protozoa, they actually uh, process those minerals as well as the bacteria and make it um, soluble for plants to take up. But the next part of that is the mycorrhiza, which is um, this uh, fungal system that lives around the roots of plants. So micro fungus, rhiza is roots. So mycorrhiza, root fungus. So what the root fungus does is actually colonizes around the roots and then um, takes and grabs and basically brings all the nutrients to the plants. So after the bacteria do their job and the protozoa do their job and kind of poop out all of that good stuff, the mycorrhiza brings it in and um, basically delivers it to the plant. Um, so this has all of that in it. So if you have um, soil or a house plant that you've had for a while and haven't really fed or changed the soil on, this is really good for you um, just because it's recolonizing um, and making the soil basically living again. Uh, this is also really good if you're transferring over from a chemical lawn to an organic lawn because chemical lawns just feed the grass. They don't actually feed the soil, so they don't feed the organisms that make all this happen. So um, that's also a whole nother thing. Um, so this is really good. Another thing that I like to do is I will uh, top dress, uh, which is you take something and you basically sprinkle around like the top of the plant and you're dressing the top. Um, worm castings, amazing. Worm castings is worm poop. It's stuff that worms have shit out and it's amazing. Um, and then I'm actually trying for the first time, uh, on my house plants at least, uh, this amazing plant food from uh, Costa Maine, uh, which I actually know a lot of people who work for that too. They're really awesome. Please, 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 go to your local independent garden center first and ask them. Please buy from independent garden centers. Because a lot of these people, like myself and all my coworkers, and most all like employees of what's called an IGC, independent garden center, um, they do so much training and know so much and you really want to learn from them and really want to support them. If you go to like Walmart or like Home Depot, yes, they might have some good products around, but guaranteed you weren't going to have the staff there that have been trained to help you and figure out your exact problem. They're just going to point at some random thing and be like, all right, yeah, that's, that's probably what you need. Um, so please, for real guys, go to your local independent garden center. Um, they're part of your local economy. They're people like me 
who have devoted their lives to this. It's not like, oh, this is a good, like, get quick rich. 